In this lesson, we're going to go over how to create an advanced PDF as well as how to assign a new custom advanced PDF to your invoice or sales order or really any place where they're being used and make sure that you get all the configurations set up and understand how that whole process works. If you don't know what an advanced PDF is, it's essentially just an invoice or a sales order and how that whole document looks and how the information is displayed on that document. To start off with, we're going to go into customization forms and then advanced PDF HTML templates. And inside of here, these are all the different types of advanced PDF templates that you can use. If you see customize next to it, that means that this is the standard one that is provided and this cannot be edited directly. You would have to essentially create a copy of that by selecting that customize. In this example, we're going to go over an invoice or I'm going to search for the invoices and you can see that over here in type. That's the different types it has. And I have quite a bit here already, but we're going to just create a new one based off the standard. So I'm going to look down to where there's probably a customize because that means that's the initial one. And that's what I see there. It says standard invoice PDF HTML template. I'm going to select customize. And here I'm going to select the template setup and change my name to a oh, tutorial invoice template. And then you can add some description here as well if you needed to, or maybe a, a different ID as well. And you can also change the way the page looks, whether it's portrait or landscape, and the different sizing of those pages and margins too. Generally, they're just kept like this. I don't think I've ever seen any that aren't like that. Now that we have this created, you can see that we have this builder tool here. There's two options for creating your advanced PDFs. You can use this builder tool, which has some preset things done for you right now, or you can also click this source code, which will bring up the code of it and allow you to access that more directly. This really is my favorite way to do it through the code because I'm a developer and it just makes a whole lot more sense. And then I don't have to deal with the, the tools that are not always the best optimized to set these up. And, and really this tool is not my favorite for a click and drag type tool. The next thing, now that we have figured out that we can create this new tutorial invoice PDF template, I want to make sure that it appears whenever I do print what I need to on an invoice. So I'm going to click save. And once it's saved, I'll just confirm that it shows up in the list where I want it to. And I'll just find it using this invoice. I'll scroll down and there it shows up right there. That's good. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that this advanced PDF is the one that is going to be called out onto the invoice whenever I print it because right now it might not have this one particularly assigned to it. So I'm going to go into the invoice of one of them. So transactions and sales, create invoices. I'm going to select list and I'm just going to select the view on this first one. And I need to customize the form to make sure it's using this new one. And I had just done this, but normally you would, you could create a new name. This will create a new transaction form. And then you would select your print template. And for us, it's our new one that we just created. And that would ensure that this one is the one being printed. Right now, for the email template being sent out, it's this other test email invoice. And it will not be the same as this one. And you don't really want them to be the exact same because coding is a little bit different for an email template. Otherwise, you're going to get some really weird email styling and it'll look way off. So that it's really a different skill set going on. So now that we know that we have this print template, we're going to just click save. And yeah, I really want to submit it. And I'm going to go back into transactions. Uh, right now we're in the custom transaction forms, which is located forms, template transaction forms. And it, you can just see that the one that we were just editing within there is right here. Just so you know, let's go back into the, the invoice and I can show you where we're going to be printing the new invoice whenever we're ready, the advanced PDF. We're going to go into sales and create invoices. We'll just look at the list of them. I'm going to view this one. There's this print. Now, this is totally the native one that we selected. We have not customized this form at all. So that's how it's going to show up. So I'm going to select print and it'll give me a nice preview of that specific invoice information on the template. 
Okay, so this is what we get. Now we know that we need to do a little bit some customization because the information is way off. Now, just from experience, I know that what's going on here is simply because the logo that I uploaded into my company information was a much larger image file size and it doesn't automatically reset it. So I have to go manually go change how that would reset into a normal file size. But normally this would be on the top left corner. But at least now we know that this is how it would look if I didn't do anything at all. Now let's go back in and do some editing to this to see if we can get this to look a little better. I'm gonna go back into the customization and the forms, advanced PDFs, and then I'm gonna search for the one that we created, the tutorial, and I'm gonna select edit. And this is what I'm talking about right here. This image was really big, the file size was. And that image is sourcing using something called free marker and it'll it'll source the id of fields without doing anything special to them you can select this to edit the code directly but as soon as you do this you risk the chance of breaking the way this configurator works so i would say if you haven't gotten any experience using the coding then maybe create a separate one and and go from there and you can copy and paste code over pretty easily so just, just know that as soon as you start editing the code, you, you run the risk of this breaking a little bit more. And honestly, that's not a big deal because you'll realize soon enough that it's better just to write the code for it. So I'm gonna right click on this image and select the image properties. And you'll notice that this is kind of a preview of that information, but we saw that we had a massive logo that stretched really large. So we can override the width. I'm gonna say probably like, 200 or so and then a height maybe of 100 based on I know how our logo looks right now now if I, like, if I select okay it does create this little outline so I know what it'll look like and then this other information is different types of text you can also select this text and change the font sizes and um, and different fonts as well and do some bullet pointing and, and change the way that company name would would look this right here is pulling in the ID of that company. And what that means is that in my company information, if I go over there, there's an ID for each of the information that they're pulling through. Like this address, this main address text, they're gonna be pulling this information through. And each of the IDs, like if I wanted to show the website, that it would just be the company information dot URL is how the code would look. Uh, something similar to that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we could go in here and I could edit this a little bit more in detail if I needed to. You'll notice that this is actually a table. So there, you, there's some rows and some columns here. Um, I actually am going to go ahead and right click and select table properties. And you'll see that it's stretching 100%. There's three rows and two columns. So there's this column and this column. And this one over here is actually in three rows. And you can what you can do is you can override styling. If you know some HTML, you can override this to say like color um, are one of our colors that we use. And I can change this all to uh, becoming an orange color within here, which, which is a nice way that you can quickly do some styling changes if you don't really want to edit the big form. But let's go ahead and give this a little preview. This is preview button over here. Okay, so this is a little better. At least the image isn't going way off the screen and covering everything. In this preview mode, it just gives you some basic information. It fills out the form so that you can get an idea of what it might look like. In, in this case, they just put the max amount of characters um, or, or pretty close to that and then give you some of your information that it, it was able to pull, like the company information is demo anchor group. If I go into that comp company information, that's that right there. It's pulling that field. And if I go in here, you can see that, okay, yep, it did pull that address field. It did bring it to the next line because of the column width of this one. And we've got some invoice information. There are three rows, one, two, three here. And then there's bill to, ship to, they've got some totals in here, some summary information, the terms. This is pulling the terms from 
the, the customer information. So let's go back into here and look at this a little bit more in detail. So how do you get this terms even to appear here? And how would it source that information automatically? So we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna select there. I'm just gonna go down a line and I'm gonna click this plus, which is fields. And let me scroll down to see maybe something else that I could throw in there. Um, I bet I could put in a memo or maybe the sales rep, if you wanted to show the sales rep. And maybe you wanted to, on the next line, show the sales rep email so they had someone to contact. So let's say that we want to get this page number in here. I'll show you how that works. All it is is this button up here. They say page number, and then you could say page number of, and let me type this out, of this other one, which is the total pages, the page count. And that's really all they're doing down there. And if I wanted to add a page break, or, or horizontal line, I should say, to create some separation between even a table, we can definitely do that. And you can do a lot of information with each of these tables, especially when you're using some, some other things in the more advanced features. You can do something called grouping, um, which would take, do a little bit more math and function related work to summarize information. Let's say you wanted more, more summary information on this invoice. You could do that in encoding. And, and in the assignment, I do have an example of what that might look like for, for one of the assignments. And that's pretty advanced, so you're definitely going to be wanting to use this coding and, and look at the source code for that to be able to access that information in greater depth. So let's take a peek at this and review it. So this is what it looks like right now. And it's, it's not ideal, obviously. You're, you're going to want to do some a little bit more editing here to make sure it looks right. But you can see that a lot of the information might be there. So there is no sales rep name, actually. So what we have here is just the sales rep email. The sales rep name would show up here if there was one. You can see that page two of two or, or one of two, right? And that's where we put that information. Normally, you would set it inside of the footer so that you don't just have it located on one spot, right? And let's go save this and see if it's how it looks on an actual order. So I'm gonna click save. And then we're gonna go into the invoice of an example one. And I'm gonna click view on that person and click this button right here and print it. And this is gonna give me some real information on an actual invoice on how it might look to a client that might be receiving it or one of your customers, right? So it's obviously a lot shorter because there's not all that random information and it has the information that you need up here. You can customize this even more to make it look right and to change the fonts and to change the look of really everything. It gets to the point where you wanna be really granular. You do have to start editing the code. There's definitely a lot of limitations with this little tool. It'll just get you to the point where you have something available, but I would definitely suggest editing the code even further to have something a little bit better than this. Let me show you how you can edit that code a little bit more in depth and give you a high level summary of what that code is and how that HTML works if you haven't done something like that. We're back with our advanced PDF, but now I'm gonna go into more of a hard coding mode here in just a second. So I'm gonna select this source code and I'm gonna say, yep, I wanna switch over to that. And what it's gonna do is bring me all the code for that advanced PDF. So the main things that you wanna be looking at are gonna be the styling right here. Here's all the different classes that you'll be using, the table size, the TH, the table headers, the table columns, TD, different types of information. And most developers will obviously know how to do some styling within HTML and, and some CSS. In an advanced PDF, it's probably better to do more class type styling. And then in an email template, you wanna do more inline styling because different types of emails like Outlook reads the styling a little differently. We've got our head information that just closed out up there with all of our styling. Now we're getting into the bread and butter things, the, the body here. The first table, it's calling out a table and saying, okay, the table column one, two, three, four, right? And we've got the first row technically right here. I like to organize it a little bit differently because it's hard to read <laughs> like that. So let me just explain tables if you haven't done them before in some HTML. 
So you've got a table call out, and then you're saying the first row, there's going to be three columns within that row. And then in the second row, there's going to be another three columns. And you can combine columns and rows and, and stuff like that too. Not that hard. And then here's where you're going to use free marker to call out an ID and to bring that information from a record. So this is saying record.dude at label. The record.due date at label means the label of the due date ID, which in this case is just due date, right? And now I'm bringing the information that the due date information, which is record.due date. And then there's some more records. In our case, we added a caption, right? And we'd have the terms, the label of the terms, and then the, in the, that's in the header right here. And then in the next row, we've got the actual terms, the data, the record.terms coming in. And you can go down a little further. You've got the total pages that you got tax rates some subtotals in that information. You can start using different types of loops and, and, and lists so that you can do grouping of different types of content and make your invoice a little bit more unique. Really the best thing to do is to edit this code so that it mimics the styling of your company and call it good until you need to do some more advanced stuff a little later in your setup process. And, and that's totally just fine. So hopefully this gives you a good understanding of what you need to do. If I were you, I would actually be editing this code in a different software, maybe in the Visual Studio code, and then copy and pasting it in here, clicking save, and then using that preview feature. And that's really it for advanced PDFs. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out and make sure to comment as well. And hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions.